So Thermaltake just released another version of their popular Tower series PC cases. The Tower 300 in the micro ATX form factor. Although, take the word micro with a grain of salt because this is still a pretty big chonker. The fact that you can squeeze in a 420 millimeter radiator feels illegal in a so-called micro ATX form factor. But here we are. Finish building a PC and you're greeted by this horrendous watermark? Well, instead of paying $200 for a CD key from Microsoft, you can pick one up as low as $15 from yourcdkey.com. They do sell keys for Windows 10 Pro and Windows 11 Pro as well. The discount code TS20 will get you the extra discount, so make sure to put that in the promotion code box before checking out. Afterwards, they will send you the code within a minute and all you have to do is go into the activation settings of your PC and put it in to get rid of the watermark and fully enjoy all the features of Windows. Unlike the other tower cases, the 300 sports three tempered glass panels providing a nice subtle panoramic view into the internals of the case. You can either keep it standing like this or rotate it sideways using the included horizontal mount if you're into that symmetrical look. But realistically, this isn't ideal if you have a small desk because this will eat up a lot of space on your surface, but it's cool that they gave you the option. The Tower 300 comes with two pre-installed CT140 fans up top, which are set as exhaust, but you do have the option of adding up to six more 140mm fans if you choose to. You can do triple 140s or install a 420mm AIO on the side bracket. You can also hook up two more fans in the back to help with additional airflow inside the case, and one more on top of the power supply shroud. Although I do have to mention, it's a very tight fit with the motherboard cables. You're gonna have to lift the cables up and then slide the fan in, so do keep that in mind. Unless you go with a slim fan, then I don't see any issues. For I.O., you get two USB 3s and one Type-C, along with the usual power reset and audio jacks. And near the bottom, there's an optional 3.9 inch LCD display that you can swap for an additional $90. This will sync with the TT RGB Plus 2.0 software, and you can customize it to showcase hardware info, time, and weather. Although I think mine is bugged for some reason because it doesn't show the real-time stats. It's been stuck at a single number regardless of what I'm trying to track, whether it's the CPU, GPU, or whatever. But the weather and the time app work just fine. Okay, let's talk about the build experience. All the side panels are toolless, thankfully. You will need to pop off the top cover first before you remove the other side panels. But for some reason, I was having trouble removing the front panel because I'm dumber than a nutsack. I didn't read the tiny text on the top of the case and realized that all I had to do was press the glass panel and it will automatically pop back out. Due to the nature of the case design, the motherboard is flipped sideways by 90 degrees in order to slot in the graphics card vertically. Unfortunately, with this layout, the ports from the motherboard are recessed inside the case, making it more difficult to reach. And I'll talk more about that later, but I do want to mention a small little issue that I came across while installing the board. The MSI MAG B760M mortar that I'm using for the build has a slightly extended IO shield, as you can see here. And because of this, it was coming in contact with the rear PCI bracket of the case. This made it impossible to align the board with the standoffs, and I was forced to overlap it, causing the IO shield to bend slightly. Now this didn't cause any issues, nor is it a deal breaker, but it's something worth mentioning. Okay, so back to the IO. If you need to plug in a cable into the back of the motherboard or the GPU, there is only one way of doing this. You have to pop off the top cover, loosen the two thumb screws so that you can flip open the bracket giving you access to the rear I.O. of the motherboard and the rear ports of your GPU. You can technically do this while the PC is on, as long as you're careful, of course. Uh, but if you're not plugging a cable, the second method is a lot easier. You just have to remove the front glass panel, and from here, you have direct access to the back of the motherboard to plug in a USB drive or whatever you want. Again, you can technically do this while the PC is on, just as long as you're careful, and this might vary depending on what cooler you are using. Obviously for AIOs, the pump is very small, so it's easy to reach over it. If you're using one of those big chonker air coolers, then it might be more difficult. One thing this case does right is cable management. We got grommets in all the right places to help route the cables, and there's just enough space left near the side of the case where I was able to plug the front panels from underneath it. Needless to say, there was a ton of extra space left behind the case and under the power supply shroud to hide the excess cables. For storage, you have the option of adding up to two hard drives or SSDs in the back, and one more additional hard drive or SSD on the right side of the inner power supply shroud 
Granted, you don't throw in a 420 millimeter AIO like I did. Which brings me to the AIO installation. If you're like me and you're throwing in a 420 millimeter AIO, you can install it the way the case intended for it. There's just not enough clearance for the rad, unfortunately. As you can see here, if I try to bring in a radiator with the bracket hooked up, the bottom of the case does not let the rad slide in. The only option would be to bring in a radiator first and then install the bracket afterwards. I don't see any potential issues with smaller size rads, so if you're putting in a 360 or a 280, you should be fine. Installing the graphics card was surprisingly a lot easier. The case can support up to 400 millimeter graphics cards without an issue, so any of the Thick Boy RTX 40 series cards will fit beautifully with room to spare. And for temps, we were actually looking pretty good. The GPU peaked at 56 degrees while staying mostly under it, playing Modern Warfare 3 in 1440p ultra settings and the hottest the CPU ever got was 65 degrees, but it stayed well under 60 for the most part. To be honest, I wasn't that surprised considering there's a massive 420 millimeter AIO hard at work, but it's nice to see that the thermals in this case are great. The Tower 300 comes in five different flavors and it retails for $150. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll drop a link to it down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.